The Unity job system is an amazing tool to use when writing really heavy code in your Unity projects. I learned how to use it properly in my current project, where I use real-time deformation and cutting of 3D meshes for VR. When I started this, I was spending about 4 milliseconds on the actual bending, and this is almost half the available frame time available for 90 Hz, which is pretty much the default for VR, so that wouldn't work. With optimizations using the job system and the burst compiler, I got this down to 0.2 milliseconds with a mesh of 80,000 vertices, which are being deformed in real time. This kind of performance is pretty great, as it basically doesn't have any downsides. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this job system and, and integrate it with burst, and even run the code in the background so it doesn't stall the main thread at all. First, I want to quickly go over the job system, how it works, what it does, and how you can use it properly in your projects. So the job system can be used to schedule certain tasks called jobs on worker threads. A worker thread is basically any CPU thread which is not the main thread used by Unity. So you have a CPU with eight cores and 16 threads. One thread of these will be the main thread for Unity, and the other 15 threads are called worker threads, which usually aren't used that much in games. With the job system, you can schedule one or multiple jobs across all these worker threads, and the job system will automatically handle all the scheduling of the worker threads and even make sure all the calculations are safe so there aren't any unexpected errors. To get the most out of the job system, you should also use the burst compiler. This is optional, but can really speed up your code. Some benchmarks by Unity themselves showed up to a four times performance improvement by just using burst and not the job system at all, so that's already a big win. The burst compiler optimizes the code written into native machine code when building your game, and it will try to make it as optimized as possible. There are certain ways to improve it even more than the default, so if you want to see an in-depth video on this as well, definitely let me know in the comments. First, I'm going to show how to install all the dependencies needed for the job system, so that will be burst, mathematics, and the collection packages. I'm also going to show you how to update this to the latest version so you can get the best performance possible. Then, using a quick example, I'm going to show you how you can implement jobs and burst in your projects. And this example is visible on GitHub, so you can check out both the before and after, so you can even follow along step by step with this video. The timestamps are also available on screen right now, so if you just need a specific part, you can go there and watch that section. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the guide. To make burst work, you do need to install some things. The job system is included by Unity by default. But for the job system, you of course need Burst itself, and this is from the package manager in the Unity registry. You need the collections package, and this is if you want to use lists and arrays, which are compatible with Burst and jobs. And last of all, you need mathematics. This is a math library used for um, Burst, so it can optimize the code even better. Also, you might notice if you go to the changelog of Burst, there are definitely versions newer than the current one installed, all the way up 1.8. There are some pretty huge improvements in this. It can have better performance and the last ones even support different platforms. So if you're starting out, I do recommend to actually update Burst the latest version. You can do this inside of the package manager, but if you right click right here, click open in Explorer, go to packages and then the package JSON file, you can show it here there is a Burst version. And if it's not there, you can manu manually add the Burst tag right here and then put in the latest, which is 1.8.4. Save this file and then Unity should pick it up automatically. Once updated, it will tell you to restart the editor. So quickly restart the editor and I will see you back once it is updated. So right now you can see it uses the latest burst version 1.8.4, which is just what we need. So now how are we going to actually implement this? I made a very basic demo where I have a cube which moves and this is done by moving all the vertices of this cube. You can see right now we are about 60 FPS and the CPU main thread is at 17 milliseconds. So let's improve this. So to quickly show the code doing this, we have a mesh, an origin, which is basically vector 3.0 right now. And we have two arrays. The arrays are the vertices at the start and the vertices which are deformed. So in the start, it is very simple. We get the mesh from the mesh filter and we fill the current vertices array with the vertices from the mesh. 
And the new array, we basically set it to the amount of vertices that the mesh has. So we can simply put any data in it we want. Then an update. So every frame, we look through all the vertices. We get the original vertex position. We offset it. We make a new position. And we put it in the new vertices array. The code here isn't that important how it works. We are just going to change it into a system which works for bursts and jobs. And lastly, we take the new positions and put it into the mesh so it actually updates visually, which you could see in the scene. So now let's write this into a system which actually works for the job system. So if you want to use burst jobs, mathematics, and the collections packages, you can add these using tags at the top so you can use all the features available. So we are going to go step by step through the entire code and make sure it works with the job system. First of all, we are not going to use a default array. We are going to change this to a native array. This is fairly important. This is so Unity can manage the memory better and make sure everything just works and can be optimized. To use this, you're going to call native array and in here put the variable. And we are not going to use vector three. To use birth and the Unity mathematics package, we need to use float three. Then we can copy over the names and instead of array, let's just call them native array so we can keep them apart. So next we are going to fill these arrays with the required data. For this, you need to create a new native array. So this is familiar to the syntax of a list rather than an array, but it does basically the same. We make a native array, offload trees, and if you see here in the overrides, we want the length, which is the vertex count, since we want the same amount of vertices at the start and the end. And then we need an allocator type. This is fairly important. You got multiple versions of this. The th ones you are probably going to use most is persistent. This means it stays in memory and it is fairly slow to deallocate. We can use temp. This is a value you can use inside of jobs, or you can use this when a array is created and destroyed within the same function. This should not be used longer than one frame. And you can use temp job. This is to use the job system, and this shouldn't be used for more than four frames. So for us, we are going to keep the, the array alive as long as the game runs. So we are just going to use persistent. Same for the new native array. We simply make it, allocate it, and that should work. Now there is one extra step for acquiring the mesh data, and this can be a little bit annoying. We need to acquire the mesh data array right here using the using statement. Then get the vertices, put in the old vertex data array, so not the new one. And we need to reinterpret this from a vector three. And after that, the setup should be done. Now for the tricky bit, how are we going to change this, this for loop to a multi-threaded system? So for this, I already prepared this. We are going to use a job. So I personally suggest to do this in a separate script you can also simply put this below here. It can be inside the class or outside the class, that doesn't really matter. But you need to make sure it inherits from ijob parallel 4. At the top, we need to declare all the variables which it will use. And it is suggested that to use the read only and write only tags. This is so Unity can check if the code is safe, if it should work, and if it can optimize it even further. So as the inputs, we want the original positions. We want the position of the ripple, where it starts out at. And we want to use the delta time, so it is basically frame independent. It can work as smooth as you want. Then we need an array for the new vertices, and this is all there. Next, we need an execute version. And one thing is, if you use a parallel four, you're basically going to run through a whole array using the index right here. So it's basically the same as a for loop, but it can run across all threads. If you want to use something in parallel, so for example, using list doesn't work properly, you can remove this, have I job, and this is basically one single job. But for us, we are looping through everything, so you, we want to use parallel four. Now, there are some differences between a normal C -sharp script and a burst compiled C -sharp script. First of all, you see we use the math class right here from Unity Math Mathematics, and this is the class you are going to use for all calculations. You are not going to use vector 3 distance that does not exist here. For this, we got method distance, and this does exactly the same, but it is easier to optimize for the compiler. Same for the sine wave. We are going to use math.sign instead of math f.sign. 
And for normalize, we cannot normalize a vector, a float tree by using float tree dot normalize. We need to call math.normalize and then input it right here. And other than that, it basically is the same. It's just a bit different syntax. If you Google a certain thing you want to do, so for example, unity burst calculate distance, you can find these functions quite easily. And they are mostly the same as the ones used in mathf and the unity extend extensions. So right here, you can see if I put the code side by side, it basically works exactly the same. We get the original position, calculate it and offset it, and then put the new system and then put the new position in the new vertices list. So now how to actually schedule all this and update, this can be a bit of the tricky part. So first of all, I am going to comment out all this because this is not being used after this. And we gotta start out with making a new job. And first we need to make sure all the actual public data is filled. So the original vertices, the ripple position, delta time and new vertices are all filled using this. And then you need to couple the native arrays right here. Next step, we need to actually make sure the schedule so it does work properly. For this, you can make a job handle and let's call it the form job handle. And then we can call it the form job and schedule us. Because this is a for loop, we need to give it the length of the array. So that will be the vertex array dot length. And we need to give it what's called the inner batch count. And what this does, it is very heavy for Unity to um, schedule each job individually. So you can batch jobs together. So the value you put in here is how many jobs it can put together on a single working thread before scheduling something new. So let's say if you have 8,000 vertices, if this would be one, it would make 8,000 individual jobs. If you have a workload like this, put it at something like 64, and then it can schedule it in chunks of 64 jobs at, at the same time. Now, how are we going to get the data out of this job? This is also fairly simple. We are going to call the job handle.complete. And after that, we can actually quite easily get the data out of this. So we can simply get the set vertices again. And instead of the array we got right here, we are going to put in the deform job and then the new vertices. And these are references together. So these are pretty much the same array. Once you put this in, this should already work great. And especially if you have a lot of parallel code, this will improve performance a lot. As you can see right here, we got from 60 FPS to over 350 FPS. This is pretty great and amazing for performance. And you can actually optimize this even more because right now when calling complete, we need to wait for all the jobs to be completed pretty much at the same time. So it is multi-threaded, but it's still installing the main thread. To improve this, we can get the data in late update, which runs after all the other updates have completed or even get it in the next update so it can run in the background while running all the game code. And when using the next update, it can even run it while rendering the frame. So for this, the code is visible right here. I got a version for pretty much all states I can put this in. So right here, we got the old version, which basically uses plain C sharp. We got the jobified version, which we have right here. And the update mesh basically says complete it and then set it to the vertices. And we got two more versions right here. The first is, you, again, pretty much the same setup, but instead of updating the mesh automatically, we are only going to schedule it. So this will make, this will make sure it can be scheduled and using this code actually schedules it and starts working on it. So you can start working on it an update and then in late update, you can update the mesh. So it will run the code in the background while all the other updates are running. If you're performing really heavy code, you can even get the data in the next frame. For this, you can quickly check if the data is completed. Once it is completed, you can update the mesh and then you can actually schedule the next job. This is again, really amazing if you have really heavy data, which can be calculated across multiple frames. This does add a frame of delay, but if that is not an issue, this can be great for performance, especially since it can run in the background while even rendering your frame. Last but not least, there's an amazing tip if you use late update to obtain all your data. 
And this is in the script execution order. If you go to edit, project settings, and then script execution order, you can change this however you want. Right now it is set up to first call event system, then default time, which means all the other update scripts run, and then toggle group. If you add a script here, so for us this will be mesh manager, and move it to the top. Once update starts, it will first call mesh manager .update. Here you can schedule all your code. And if you batch this code, it will run it in the background. So it will run, and while it is running, all the other updates are called. And then once late update comes, in the mesh manager late update, you can simply get all the data. And once you obtained all the data, you can use it however you want. And the processing cost on the main thread is very low, which is great for games. So I hope you learned a bit on the job system, how it works, and how you can use it for your projects. There are, of course, a lot more optimizations possible. So if you have any suggestions or requests, definitely put them in the comments below so I can take a look at them. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out. And that way I can keep making these videos in the future.